I thought today what I would like to, to focus on for race day today is uh, racing with faith. Because there's really a strong element of faith, not necessarily with everybody on pit lane or our teams that's faith in God. There's a lot of that. Uh, in racing, we know clearly that, um, for instance, in pit lane today, do you know what the pit lane speed limit is today? 60 miles an hour. Not about you, but I have never been inclined to want to change tires on I-465 uh, where they do more than 60 miles an hour, but at least 60 miles an hour there. I'd rather not do that. Um, and it's always amazing to me to watch our guys that go over the wall, or our men and women, I think we'll have a few women actually today that will be out there, to do that. They trust that their driver will not hit them. Now, already this season we've already seen where drivers have hit some of our crew members. Yet I watch our team after team after team run across that wall and do everything they do to the car in a very quick manner. The other thing is at this particular racetrack that amazes me is when you watch a car go into turn one, and many of them will be going flat out. And I, I, it just blows my mind. Engineers have explained it to me, the tires, the aerodynamics, all that kind of thing. But that takes a lot of faith to keep your foot on the gas to go into this turn at over uh, 200, sometimes 220 miles an hour. Um, it's amazing. There are elements of faith within our racing, and certainly the greater ones to me are when we trust God, what he's willing to do. There's a passage, and if you will, join with me in your bulletin from Matthew chapter 14. This comes from the contemporary English version because I like the reading of this. Right away, Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and start back across the lake, but he stayed until he had sent the crowds away. Then he went up on a mountain where he could be alone and pray. Later that evening, he was still there. By this time, the boat was a long way from the shore. It was going against the wind and was being tossed around by the waves. A little while before morning, Jesus came walking on the water toward his disciples. When they saw him, they thought it was a ghost. They were terrified and started screaming. At once, Jesus said to them, don't worry. I am Jesus. Don't be afraid. Peter replied, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come on, Jesus said. Then Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water toward him. But when Peter saw how strong the wind was, he was afraid and started sinking. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Right away, Jesus reached out his hand. He helped Peter up and said, you surely don't have much faith. Why do you doubt? When Jesus and Peter got into the boat, the wind died down. The men in the boat worshipped Jesus and said, you really are the Son of God. One of the most fantastic places I've gotten to go was just a few years ago when I got the opportunity to go to Israel and to uh, see all the places that, and my dad was a preacher, so you grow up, you go to Sunday morning church, Sunday school, Sunday night church, Wednesday night church, all the revivals in the community, so, and you go to church camp, and you go to youth conventions. So growing up, I'd heard all these places uh, about Jerusalem. So being in Jerusalem, of course, one of the things you do in Jerusalem is you get to see all the different things, the Wailing Wall, the Via Della Rosa, and on that they, they say this is the spot where Jesus put his hand uh, not really sure. They think it is. Some think it is, but we don't really know that for sure. And then all the other places. You went to Bethlehem, and you go to a church building, and they say this is where Jesus was born. I know he was born in Bethlehem, and it's still a lowly city. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. But one of the places that we went that I cherished the most was the Sea of Galilee. I know he was on the Sea of Galilee. Um, and we took boats out in the middle of that, that lake, and this story is very much a part of that. You can see when you look around and realize winds could come up and this thing could begin to happen uh, that we hear about with Jesus. He had left them, went up into a mountainous area, but he came back down. And when he came back down, it was dark. Some of us came across this track this morning, and it was dark. And I was saying, I don't know why we have these night races here. I don't know when we started that. And then finally the sun comes up, and oh, yeah, we're going to have it during the day. Um, but it was dark when Jesus came to them. They couldn't see clearly who he was. They just knew somebody's out there, and it scared them. I would probably be scared, too, if I were there. There wasn't ski boats on the Sea of Galilee at that time. When I think about this story, I also think about uh, Lake Ming, Bakersfield, California. That's where I learned to water ski. Rick Mears and I talk about that a lot because he's from that area. He's raced there, and his mom and dad still live in Bakersfield. There's a six-foot-deep lake there that I learned to water ski on. We, uh, we used to do that on January 1. I did it for five straight years so I could get the Polar Bear Award. Let me tell you, in Bakersfield, California, in January, it's still cold. 
but we called it walking on water class um, because when you're skiing, you're on top of the water. Um, this story comes alive for me, and today, if I summed up what I want you to get from this message is this. Every one of us in here need to figure out what it means to us to get out of the boat. I'm not talking, uh, maybe I'm talking literally for somebody, but for all of us, it's basically a figurative thing. What is it I need to do to get out of the boat in regards to my faith with Jesus Christ? I would imagine most every one of us in this room, maybe not all, but most of us say, I believe in Jesus Christ, I believe in God, and I have faith in him. Which really should mean I trust him. With what? With what? We pick on Peter in this story. And people think that Jesus is picking on him, but I don't think Jesus is picking on him. When Jesus said, you have little faith. What about the other 11 guys? You know, what were they doing? You know, they had, did they have none? Um, they didn't get out of the boat. Peter did. And I like to focus on Peter because I would hope I was like Peter. I would hope that I'm going, well, Lord, if it's you, I'm coming out there. Come on. Um, I've done some crazy things in life. I've done parasailing, scuba diving, driven a, one of our cars at Phoenix International Raceway, taken a two-seater ride. To some people, those are crazy. I don't think it's that crazy. Um, be out, you know, when our cars are running different places. Um, but I really want you to think about that today. If I, I'm not going to read what all I have in the bulletin, because you can do that on your own, and I, and I want you to do that. One of the first things is I believe that Jesus did this so he could reveal who he really was. He wasn't just a, a nice Jewish guy roaming the land. When he walked on the water, those 11 guys clearly, or 12 guys clearly knew, <laughs> hey, there's something unique about him. And that's why at the very end there they said, you really are the son of God. If you know a little bit before this, they were kind of wondering a little bit. You know, he's talked about these different things. He's done some things. I mean, who is he really? Because people are scratching their head. They're thinking that the Savior, the Son of God, come out of Bethlehem? Uh-uh, I don't think so. Or Nazareth? No, I don't think so. You know, they weren't thinking that way, a lot of the people. Um, and, you know, he didn't run around in a limousine in those days. He didn't have a flock of, of uh, donkeys that they all rode on. Um, he didn't have a couple suitcases full of a bunch of clothes. He wasn't what they would have considered royalty in that day and age. So a lot of people were scratching their head and wondering, really, who is he? This event was pro profound to those 12 in particular, and you can bet a lot of other people heard about this, what took place. Um, amazing elements. On the second part of your bulletin, I said, uh, we need to be willing to leave the boat. So I want to ask you that question. With the little time that we have left, I don't know where you're at in your spiritual journey. I don't know what's happening with you in regards to your faith in Jesus Christ. My challenge to you is, what is it you think you probably need to do? Because somewhere in your mind, your memory, and your thoughts, I think that's there. And I'm encouraging you to tap that today. What is it that you really should be doing? What is it that you really need to be doing? For some of us, it's speaking up and saying, you know, hey, you know, I believe in Jesus Christ, so... Can I tell you why I believe in him? Can I tell you why I have a relationship with him? Some of us feel too embarrassed to do that. Sometimes we feel too ashamed. Or better yet, we use the reason, well, you know, I don't really know what to say. It's not about having a track to hand him, although that's not a bad thing. It's more about just tell him your story. Tell him why this is important to you. Maybe another part of it is, is that you have something happen in your life so that people know that's important. If they came into your house, is there anything there that would show them that being a Christian, being a follower of Christ is evident? Or would they go, I don't really see anything here. There's nothing, I, mean, I don't see anything or find anything or hear anything that lets me know this person that lives in this house has anything to do with Christ or God. Um, I'm not talking about trinkets. I'm not talking about those things. I'm just talking about evidence that would show. Um, I don't know what it is for you, so I'm encouraging you to really think about that. What, what is it I need to do? And it may be today. Uh, for some of us, maybe me, it will be to hold my tongue at times when I want to say something. Yellow shirts know what I'm talking about because uh, people are just so kind, uh, especially when they've had a few beverages that are not of the soda kind. Um, 
they tend not to be, some people, not so nice. And they don't always treat our safety patrol so nice. Um, but for some of us, it's holding our tongue today. Some of us, it's speaking up and saying something. Uh, some of us saying, you know, I just want you to know I love Jesus. And let me tell you why. Um, sometimes it's an act of kindness. Um, let me tell you a quick story with the time we have. Over in the Coke lots, there's a group of Christians from a church. They don't have a banner up about their church. Matter of fact, I don't think over there I haven't actually put my eyes on it that they have anything that would tell you that they're Christians or a church. They simply are giving free hot dogs and soda and chips and things like that to people in a fenced in, little fenced in area that people, it's just kind of a safe zone. They can sit and just relax. But through that, you know, obviously people are going to go, so what are you guys about? I mean, what are you giving this stuff away for? And they get the opportunity to just love people and have opportunities to share with them. Uh, I think that's a cool way. It's, it's just doing nice things for people so they wonder why you're being so nice. <laughs> in this day and age, I think we can very much wonder that. Um, in your bulletin, I want you to jump down at the bottom bold print that starts with, can you imagine? Can you imagine what it's like to walk on water? So this thing about that, what, if you were in a boat, and if some of you I know love boating, some of you I know love skiing, what would it feel like to get out and step on top of the water and walk on it? I think that would be great. Um, let me add one more piece that some of you don't know how crazy I am. In Las Vegas, on top of the stratosphere, there are some wonderful experiences that clean you out for any cholesterol issues, any digestive issues. One of them is called the Big Shot. I really encourage you, if you ever think about, you know, that'd be if you're ever in Vegas to do that. Um, but it, it can be kind of scary, you know, uh, some of those things that are up there, uh, and it can be challenging a little bit. Um, but can you imagine what it'd be like to walk on water? Even more so to know that's Jesus right over there that you're walking to. Unfortunately, we're probably all going to be just like Peter if we were to do that, and we'd start to sink because we're getting scared. You know, it's windy out here, and this water's deep. The other part here, let's go for it. Let's do something for Christ that requires us to get out of the boat. And that's really the thing I would say to you. I don't know what your boat is, what you need to do and get and move, but that's the challenge today for all of us to do that. Please pray with me. Father, thank you for the opportunity we have today. Help us, whatever the boat is in our life, whatever it is we need to do, that you would put that on our heart and our mind and, and help us as we seek courage to step out for you, to speak for you, to live for you. I thank you for Jesus, that he's our Lord and Savior. And I pray these things in his name. Amen. Have a great race day. But the Indy Racing Ministries Day didn't end with the final words of chapel. See, they were practicing what they were preaching, reaching out to the masses. Nine o'clock, Archbishop Tobin's going to do Catholic Mass at the Cooper Tire Stage right over here in the fan zone. And then at 10 o'clock, actually before that, Aaron and his band are going to fire up, and they'll be playing. Hopefully that'll be a good draw for a thing that we're calling track theology. And um, we didn't call it chapel because we... We just didn't want church people showing up. We want other people showing up as well. So we thought if we called a chapel, they may not. And, uh, but it's going to be a time where they're going to be sharing a lot of things, drawing people over. We've got a couple of Mazda Roads and Andy drivers are going to be there. Jack Root is going to be there to help ma master ceremony things for us. Well, let's just say it's a gathering of people that believe. But it's also a gathering of people that believe and like to have fun and love to celebrate. Because that sometimes is a little difficult unless we turn to each other for strength and remember that we all believe in the same thing, that Jesus Christ died on the cross so that you and I can enjoy eternal life. Race fans that were walking through the village stopped and listened to the music. They had a chance to hear the hope they might have if they accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They got Bibles from a local church. They were impacted on the day that many didn't expect to be impacted by anything. You can be impacted in the same way. Give us a call here at the station if you want to know more about starting a relationship with Jesus Christ. We'd love to talk to you about it. From the Indy 500, Andy Lynch for the Sports Report.